good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good whatever time it is you wind up watching this godforsaken video. You clicked on this video for Iceberg, and by God, are we going to get into Iceberg? But before we do that, just so you guys know, this is a part two. So if you want to watch part one, um, there'll probably be a link somewhere here. Wrong side. There we go. There. I don't know. Or if you just want to watch the video, you can totally do that too. Free will is the thing. I don't get to tell you what to do until my plans succeed. So, we're going to go ahead and just get into it. Welcome to the Ends of the World Iceberg Part 2. Is there anything... There's got to be something that rhymes with 2 that isn't boogaloo. Um, but I'm not going to think of that right now. The Awakening. Alright, so The Awakening is... I'm not even going to lie to you, I don't really know, because most Google search results show a Chopin novel by one Miss Kate Chopin, and it's about the struggle between increasingly unorthodox views on femininity and motherhood and prevailing social attitudes. What does this have to do with the end of the world? Great story. Evaporation. Everyone knows how the water cycle works, but what happens if it was only the first part, and there was no condensation or precipitation, and it was just evaporation. Then what? Well, then there's no more water. And without water, you know what that means? You're fucked. Quantum non-existence. Alright, real talk, this feels like an AI-generated prompt. This is another one of those Google recommends scholarly articles, but doesn't really give me anything. So, what is the threat of quantum non-existence? It's listed under sci-fi. No, this one doesn't make any sense. Um, can't really find much on it. But hey, maybe that is a me thing. Mimetic pandemic. All right, SCP lovers, eat your heart out. What is a mimetic pandemic? Well, it's just a pandemic of something that is spread through the brain. So for example, there's like creepy pastas of, oh, this image is haunted. Shit like that. Necro society. Alright, this is another one of those Google searches that'll lead you to a SoundCloud page. So, we're gonna go ahead and use etymology. Um, hopefully I said that word right. Listen, I learned that word by reading it, so if I said it wrong, have mercy, please, I beg you. Either way, we're gonna use this to go ahead and break down what this word means. Necro is the root meaning dead, and society is, uh, society. So, a society of the dead. How is this an end of the world? Well, there's a lot more dead people than alive people. Like, a lot more. 108 billion humans have lived and died, um, and only 8 billion of those are still around. So, it doesn't matter that, you know, we have guns and nukes. I mean, that'll probably help. But if all 100 billion dead rose, that's gonna be a little bit of what you might call a problem. The flesh that hates. I know y'all SCP fans are just creaming in your genes about all of this inclusion on this iceberg. So for those of us not in the loop, what is the flesh that hates? The flesh that hates is otherwise known as SCP-610. It is a rather horrifying disease. You might think, oh man, fictional disease? How does that end the world? Well, basically, it's like zombies, but infinitely worse, because they're also deeply religious, and, uh, considering the name, hateful. Now, that's kind of horrifying, you know, religious zombies that want nothing more than to fuck you up, but luckily, it's, according to the story, deep in the reaches of Russia, so you've got nothing to worry about. Now, of course, this ends human society as we know it if it gets out, but it doesn't really end the world necessarily, just the world as we know it. And hey, that's gonna end anyways, so let the flesh come. When day breaks, another absolutely horrifying SCP scenario for us here. When day breaks is a story of SCP-001, which is the sun. You might think, oh, what's so scary about the sun? Well, in this story, it's basically that the sun decided, hey, you know what? Today, I'm going to go fuck you mode, and it melts 6.8 billion people into essentially a sentient waxy goo with limbs. 
Now that's fucking horrifying, isn't it? Not only is this you out to get anyone who didn't get shabwinkled, um, contact with the sun will fuck you up. So this is basically the idea that seeing the sun will kill you. Now that's definitely an end of the world. That's a little bit of a problem. Forbidden knowledge. Alright, we're getting eldritch with it again. Maybe there's some things that the human brain just is not capable of adapting to and comprehending. That is the concept of forbidden knowledge. You've seen this concept a lot in like eldritch horror because the idea of forbidden knowledge is what ruins the brain. But if everyone learned a little bit of forbidden knowledge and nobody could adapt to it, well, everyone would be a little So, not good for the longevity of humanity. Revenge of the Fae. Now, this sounds like a B-list Star Wars knockoff movie, but it is somewhat of a scary scenario. What are the Fae? If you don't know this, well, you got some reading to do. The Fae is basically the old world word for old world fairies and gnomes and other things that were human and quite weren't. And they weren't cute in the way that like fairies and gnomes are today because they would fuck your shit up. For example, if you told a fae your name, they would take it. You wouldn't have a name anymore. Or if you, you know, stepped in a fairy circle, boom, you're a hostage now. Or if you, you know, get the gift offerings to them wrong, well, there goes your skin. So, obviously, revenge of the fae is a pretty scary thing, considering that in a lot of the stories that the fae are featured in, they're already pretty terrifying. Now, of course, we don't see the fae in the modern era, and that could be for a variety of reasons, being from maybe ancient humans were just tweaking, or maybe they're staying in their realm, I don't know. But if they decided to come back and nobody knows the rules and shit starts being a little wonky, that probably wouldn't be too good. Absolute sterilization. This is gonna be a demonetizing uh, topic here, but you know what jizz is, right? Of course you do. It's essentially billions of little dudes. Now what if those little dudes weren't swimming in that? That would be a problem because then there's no more humanity. Especially if that happens in like every single guy. That's a little bit of an issue. Now, some of you might be saying, ah, oh, but we can make clones of women using bone marrow. They're not going to be that healthy. But in an absolute sterilization scenario, women don't have eggs. <laughs> so, no more of that. Now, of course, you might be thinking, ah, oh, but we have food, not an absolute sterilization scenario. I think an absolute sterilization scenario is the death of most things living. It's either the removal of the ability for anything to procreate, or it's the removal of anything living. One of those is, you know, you get to starve to death, which, ooh, fun, and the other one of those is you get capped straight away, which might be better depending on your outlook. Metaphysical Collapse. Alright, this one's definitely one of the most problematic within this tier, and not just a niche story that people haven't heard about. What does metaphysical mean? Metaphysical refers to metaphysics, which is the school of philosophy regarding the studies of the basic fundamentals of reality. So, let's ask ourselves, what happens if the basic fundamentals of reality stops working? Have you seen 2016? Now imagine that, but worse. Have you ever hallucinated the sounds of a piano in the early hours of the morning as you worked? That's how it feels to chew five young. Alright, fucking around aside, we're on to level... I almost said level two, shit, I gotta count. Eighth, seventh, the seventh level of the iceberg. I have an actual learning dis disability when it comes to numbers. Anyway, that's where we are. Death of information. Hey yo, lobotomy simulator for everybody? Because that's what this is. With no information, there's basically no way for a sentient ex species like humanity to exist. Timeline entanglement. All right, now, a timeline entanglement situation is where, believe it or not, it's in the name, two timelines get tangled up. Now, what does this imply for humanity? Well, 
there can't really be like two Earths at once. At least I don't think so. Maybe there could be, but they couldn't occupy the same space. Either way, shit would get weird. Grandma Apocalypse. If I'm being completely frank with you all, I don't know what the fuck is going on here. Now, however, uh, my lust for knowledge has led me to the Cookie Clicker Wiki. So, if you piss off grandmas by <laughs> baking too many cookies and researching the brain, <laughs> I guess shit goes wrong. So, you heard it here, kids. Don't bake too many cookies. The end. I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to do with this in terms of research. Um, however, the end is an end of the world because, believe it or not, it's in the name. It ends. How? I don't know. Beyond me. Uh, luckily, we have our little ledger all the way up here that says anything yellow is human caused, so human caused end of the world. Anti memetic pandemic. This is, uh,. Another one of those fictional ones. Probably something related to SCP, who knows. But just looking at the word here, so memetic is of the mind. As a matter of fact, a meme was first used to describe what is basically a thought. Albeit there is a more in-depth definition that I will not be getting into in this video. So an anti-memetic pandemic would be an anti-thought. So essentially, a pandemic of something that causes people to stop thinking. One might wonder if this has already happened. The Shy Guy. Alright, so SCP fans, eat your heart out, pull your dick out. The Shy Guy is another SCP entity. So what's going on with the Shy Guy and with the dude in full Air Force uniform walking past my window? That was fucking weird. What's going on with the Shy Guy? Simple. The Shy Guy is an entity that, if you perceive it, it's gonna kill you. It can't be hurt, can't be stopped. You see this guy, he, he's gonna kill you because he has serious insecurity issues. Like the average early to mid-twenties guy. Now how does this end the world? Um, unless everyone ever looks at the Shy Guy, I don't think it does. But hey, who knows? Nuospheric Contamination. Alright, so this one is gonna get into some odd concepts. The Nuosphere is the idea of human energy and how it envelops the Earth. So basically it's part of a series of three rings and a way of defining the Earth, which is the Geosphere, rocks and shit, the Biosphere, life and shit, and the Nuosphere, human thought. Now. Now, the idea that human thought fully envelops the world and creates a sort of superorganism probably used to seem fucking insane. But, thanks to this nifty little thing letting you watch the internet and, uh, watch the internet, I know how to fucking talk, watch this video and about a bajillion other things on the internet, maybe the idea isn't that far-fetched. So, Nuospheric Contamination speaks to a hypothetical situation where in the sphere of human consciousness and thought around the world is contaminated with something bad that fucks shit up. This is an end of the world situation because everyone dies, not because the world actually ends. But this one is uh, actually somewhat plausible with the internet acting as a thinking, feeling layer of the earth itself that almost seems like a superorganism. Now, of course, does that mean that something bad is going to infect the internet and everyone's going to die? No, but there's probably a few screenwriters who just heard me say that sentence, took a bump of coke, and are on their way to writing the next C-list horror movie that's going to be beloved because either it sucks or because it sucks. Liminal Gateways. Uh, whoever owns the business by the same name in Florida, I think it was, God pay Google less to advertise next time because this subject was hard as fuck to look for because of that. Yet another reason that I can't wait until Florida sinks into the goddamn ocean.
where it belongs. So, what is a liminal gateway? I couldn't really find much that's concrete about that, thanks to the business taking up at least half of the top page, speaking both to how unusable the internet is getting and to how annoying advertising is. But I digress. That's nothing to be worried about at all. If we look at the word roots of this word, it's pretty funny because liminal is referring to a threshold or a passageway and a gateway is a threshold or a passageway. So what we're looking at is gateway gateways. But of course, liminal in the modern cultural sense is referring to shit like the back rooms or in the niche modern spiritual sense, referring to communicating with deities. So this can mean one of two ways, two things. Either the communication with deities will somehow invariably end the world because maybe fucking around with things that are on a plane above you is not the best idea, or we're all gonna go into the back rooms. And wouldn't that be fun? Omega K class scenario. Oh boy. Another SCP one. Who's excited? I know I am. So, what is an Omega K class scenario? It's actually not the end of the world at all. It's the opposite. People stop dying. Now, of course, this is pretty horrible for a number of reasons because uh, SCP cannot um, cannot be happy. So it means that you know you get old and you just keep getting old, which is pretty horrible. Uh, if you get maimed or injured in a way that would kill you, you just stay maimed or injured. It's bad stuff. Really depressing. Retro casual erasure. Oh boy. Now, this one is not, like, the same as Time Paradox, but it's in a very similar vein. It's like a half-brother to Time Paradox. So, retro casuality typically refers to essentially putting the cart before the horse. Uh, it's backwards causation. Now, however, in this scenario, it's not a doctor going, hmm, a high BMI score tends to lead to depression, when in reality, depression leads to a high BMI score. It's more of a, um, oh boy, we did something, and now something way back in time is getting silly. Now, how does this happen typically with time machines? Don't exactly think there'd be any other way of doing that, but it definitely is confusing to explain and certainly capable of ending the world if it were to happen. Firmament Falls. All right, the fact that this is listed as a um, fictional slash supernatural sci-fi uh, end of the world is probably going to piss some people off because the firmament is a biblical concept related to biblical cosmology, wherein this is very, very old stuff, but essentially it's alleged in certain interpretations of the Genesis creation narrative that to divide the primal sea into upper and lower portions so that land could appear, God created a vast solid dome to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters on earth, from the waters into home or the great deep that this dome envelops the earth, makes up the atmosphere, and that is what lets land exist. Now, of course, nowadays, firmament is not talked about unless it is within extremely niche theology discussions, or if it's being discussed by flat earthers, which is a pretty funny idea. But the firmament falling is essentially the idea that we're going to shoot something up into the heavens that pokes a hole in the firmament and because God left a fucking ocean up there that's gonna be a little bit of a problem now of course space travel hasn't poked anything in the firmament and uh, I don't think there is a firmament unless it's very very far away but who knows man we could accidentally throw something up into space and the Great Deluge begins because an entire heavenly ocean drains on us. The Battle Cats. So, The Battle Cats is a strategy video game 
As for how it ends the world, uh, I don't think they do. Because the premise of this strategy video game is that cats go wild all over the world, and like the fucking Pokemon, you can capture them and make them fight. So I don't know who paid the creator of this iceberg uh, for the spot. Who, who sponsored the creator of this iceberg and got the Battle Cats a promo spot here? But they did. So I I guess I've been duped into reading a Battle Cats ad. The third rupture. Okay, so a lot of uh, search results for the third rupture bring up California earthquake forecast and detection systems. Nothing specifically about a third rupture, but the system is called UCERF3, so there is a 3 in there somewhere. Now, essentially, what's going on with UCERF3 is that it monitors the faults in California, specifically the San Andreas and all of the little tributary offshoots from that, and solves the rate of all possible earthquake ruptures in the interconnected California fault system using math to kind of predict uh, where and when damaging earthquakes are going to happen. Now, of course, this is a pretty new thing, having been installed in July of 2017, but this is honestly pretty... Uh, it's pretty fucking insane technology that we've got going here and a really incredible application of math. So why would the third rupture end the world? I don't know. Maybe it's related to the quote unquote big one that's going to separate SoCal from the rest of the continental United States. But I don't know and I uh, don't think so. Especially because the yellow that the third rupture is means that it's human caused. Call me Ashley Babbitt the way I'm about to take four shots to the chest. You know, I was at my local Mesa Rim the other day, and uh, I wanted to use a sauna. Big sauna guy I am. So I walk into the bathroom, round the corner, into the changing rooms, and there's just some, like, 35-year-old dude. Cock out and everything. And I didn't really know what to do in this situation. Because... Normally, normally it's grandpas, all right? Normally it's, you know, fucking Charles Lyndall Lerd III, born in 1942, that's got the old meat chandelier dangling. Who the fuck is this young head? Somebody's brother. Why does Unc have his dick out, you know? I didn't know what to do, so I just round the corner and... Oh, that's dick. So I just... I <laughs> I have a bit with a friend of mine that anytime anything happens, we'll just look at each other and go, we'll give each other the wrist face. So something happened and I went and walked away. And I didn't even realize that I got, until I was in the bathroom stall and I'm like, am I fucking cheeks sucked in right? Am I fucking? So, uh, yeah. Whatever salary man that was in Mesa Rim, I swear to God I wasn't coming on to you. I'm just as confused. Reverse Rapture. Alright, the river the Rapture is a situation discussed in the first part of this iceberg, wherein the worthy are taken to the kingdom of heaven. What is a reverse rapture? Uh well. I don't know, it's just the rapture, but backwards. So it's possible that a reverse rapture could be the unworthy are sent to the domain of hell, which would be a little bit of a problem, stringent and depending on how many uh, people are unworthy. Now, of course, if majority of humanity is unworthy of the kingdom of heaven, then those few who aren't sinners by whatever god we're following in this Abrahamic god situation will wake up and majority of people are gone. It's like that South Park joke where the Mormons are the ones who got it right. So they're having a really milk toast and all in all just kind of shitty party in heaven forever. 
with a weird pastor. Well, they're called bishops in Mormon culture. And uh, everyone else is in hell. And for context, because I was... Um, <laughs> a friend of mine was out and about in public and saw some very clearly Mormon kids in my area. And one of them was like, Dude, you should check out my new favorite content creator. And then, according to the friend's story, the kid then started playing to the other Mormon kid uh, one of my videos. I've made some pretty raunchy jokes about Mormons in the past. Um, but let me go ahead and clear the air and say that any jokes I make about any religious institution is not because I have a problem with everyone in said institution, it's because I have a problem with said institution. Now, of course, if you go back and watch videos from when I was like 16, uh, that might not be as clear. Because 16-year-old me was, um... That guy's opinion should not be on the internet forever, and I have to live with the consequences of that because, uh, it is. But yeah, figured I'd just <laughs> clarify that now that I brought up Mormonism. Anyway, back into the reverse rapture. Basically, you wake up and everyone unworthy of the kingdom of heaven has been sent to hell. And if it's all of us, then all of us get sent to hell. Which is probably where a lot of us would be going anyways. The final dogma. Now, if you're feeling like this video is quickly spiraling into SCP and extremely bizarre and esoteric theological discussion, well, this is not going to help that thought, because the final dogma is strange, esoteric, theological discussion. So deep within the annals of Christianity and Catholicism are the four dogmas of Mary, Mother of Jesus, right? Now, the first three kind of make sense. There's the supposed perpetual virginity of Mary, which is directly contradicted by the fact that Jesus had siblings, the immaculate conception of Mary, and the assumption of Mary, which is, of course, to say she never fucked, she was born without sin, she went straight to heaven. And that's why Mary is super cool, and everyone likes her, right? So what's the final dogma? What's the fourth dogma? The fourth dogma is that Mary would always sacrifice her son even though she is her son jesus is also son of man son of god and should the lord intend it should it be the lord's will mary would allow the crucifixion to happen thus sparing humanity so here is where the final dogma can end the world because what happens if jesus does come back which means that mary also in some form or another is going to come back because Jesus must be born from someone who follows the first three dogmas. What happens if the final dogma is wrong? And when Jesus comes back and we do not recognize him, and when Mary is back and we do not recognize her, if Mary doesn't follow the final dogma, Jesus doesn't get sacrificed, humanity perishes because of its sin, which is an extremely weird, scary, but interesting thought. Divine Decay. Alright, so... Divine Decay is a Finnish thrash metal band, and also two words featured in a British novel that was part of the Angry Young Men movement, so that's pretty interesting. Basically, this is all to say that researching this is kind of, uh, difficult. Now, of course, we can have a pretty solid idea of what Divine Decay is just based off of the words and the fact that it's a supernatural slash sci-fi thing, which is essentially that God itself could eventually fade away. And if there is no God, well, if you're in a universe where God is necessary for things to function, things stop functioning because God no longer exists. This is, of course, supposing that there is a God, and that said God is necessary for the functioning of the universe. Tulpa invasion. All right, so this is basically the Mandela catalog, but I'm gonna go ahead and explain it. What is a tulpa? A tulpa is the idea that you can sort of manifest a spirit into existence. It's essentially an imaginary friend, except it's an actual entity. So imagine if all of the imaginary friends that kids had, kind, sweet, scary, terrifying, the likes and the such, decided that they wanted to be in the real realm and that humans should be in the imaginary side of things, and they just pulled up. Now, of course, if you haven't watched Mandela Catalog, you should, because it's pretty great, you know, solid staple. 
of the analog horror. But I digress, a Tulpa invasion would be pretty disastrous because kids love thinking of shit like that, which means that you're just facing a never-ending wave of foes spawning out of the nearest toddler. Alright, you're gonna have like a boss fight, but you can't defeat the actual spawn point, so you just have to keep fighting these fucking things. Unhinged Realms. Alright, this one is uh, another one of those that seems like it's kind of an ad spot, because a lot of what I got was AFK Arena. But I digress, we're not talking about the video game. If we were operating on what an unhinged realm is and how it ends the world, we'd basically just have Hell Invasion for the third time on this iceberg. Alright, so up next we've got a philosophical zombie apocalypse. Now what is a philosophical zombie? A philosophical zombie is the idea that there is a zombie, big quotes around that, that is effectively an entity that acts as a human, but isn't a human, except that you can't really tell the difference. So we have a few different types of philosophical zombies, which is to say a behavioral zombie, which is a thing that is not human, um, completely lacking conscious experience, but it behaves indisqu indistinguishably from a human. We have a neurological human that has a human brain and is generally physiologically indistinguishable. Oh my god, this word is triggering my fucking speech impediment today. Indistinguishable from a human. We have a soulless zombie, which does have a human experience, but it lacks a soul. And an imperfect or imp zombie, which is a philosophical zombie, but has slightly different behavior than a regular hu regular human. Uh, which is to say that they just kind of act off. Now, is this necessarily a problem? I mean, not really. Let's suppose that we are living in a philosophical zombie universe. The problem is, is that I am aware, and I know that I am aware, and I can talk to other people, but because I am not them, I can never be aware from their perspective. So if you wanted to go absolutely, unfathomably off the rails and just spiral into insanity and probably stay at the mental health ward, you could start proclaiming yourself as the only real human. The problem is, is that I could do that, and however many other people who watch this video could do that. So if we all know, independently, that we are aware, then we kind of have to trust that other people are also aware. And if they weren't, you would never know. Like, literally. If something acts indistinguishable from a human, or something doesn't have a soul, there's probably basically no way for you to ever figure out. So this kind of philosophical argument is less an argument of Ooh, this is scary, to Oh, wouldn't this be fucked up? This is one of those things that is not made to actually be believed. It's just something made to be thought about. But if there was a philosophical zombie apocalypse, things would be relatively indistinguishable unless a bunch of people suddenly went from regular humans to imp zombies, which act slightly off, and even then, the world would be the same. It'd just be a little spooky. Simulation Takeover. Alright, Simulation Takeover is slightly different from the other simulation theory ones because it supposes that one, we're in a simulation, and that two, it's effectively got a computer virus. This would end the world because until we learn how to manipulate the coding of said simulation, there's really not much we can do about it. Now, of course, this is supposing that we're in a simulation, which is an entirely different topic of infinite debate that I've spoken on before when I was like 17, and a can of worms that I'm not too particularly interested in opening up again. Those which are not. You know what is not? Any information on this. I did not find anything about those which are not, so uh, there's not really going to be an entry on this one. Lots of English rules debate, though. The Giants Awaken. Alright, this is a natural one, so we're gonna go into uh, Abrahamic lore for this, which is to state, basically, that when God flooded the earth, he struck down the Nephilim, which were basically giants. Now, let's say, hypothetically speaking, some of them didn't die, and then they wake up, and they're kind of pissed about the whole being struck down thing that some other group of douchebag sinners got to uh, keep the place. That would be a little bit of a problem. There's also some other things where there's a few different books with the premise and a TV show. 
but it's basically just big guy wake up, big guy angry, big guy fuck thing up. Yeah, so the literal only example of this on the entirety of the internet is this iceberg. <laughs> That's it. It's, it's this. That's all we got. This isn't even the same iceberg. This is a different one. Mathematical failure scenario. Alright, so the mathematical failure scenario is wherein a new number is discovered where it shouldn't be, and suddenly all of mathematics, which is the foundation of how we interpret science, you know, the rules of how reality functions, starts to fail to function. Things get really silly goofy after that. Brazilian resurgence. You know they're coming back. You know they're coming back. I have a few different suggestions for Dracula Flow. Uh, my best one being in that grandma pussy so hard to call it elderly abuse. Alright, listen. We made it to the end of the ice creek. Yippee! We did it! Ooh! Honestly, I didn't like the second half as much as I liked the first half. Just keeping it real. But I'm still very happy that we made it through and that I could explain this whole thing. Another, another pen iceberg. <sighs> what is going on with my camera position? Here we go. We did it. So, if you're new here and you liked the video, go ahead and like the video. If you didn't like the video, don't like the video, dislike the video even. You have something to say, go ahead, comment. And if you really liked it and want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. You've been listening to me yap for like 30 minutes, so... I mean, what's... what's signing up for more? You already did your time, you can have some more for free. Now, as always, huge thanks to the Patreon. Uh, my Patreon numbers suffered a lot because I disappeared for most of last year. But I still really appreciate everyone who did sign up and everyone who is still signed up. So if you guys want to go ahead and support the channel, you can do that best by subscribing to the Patreon. It directly helps me. You get some merch out of it. All fun stuff, right? Now, words are hard. <laughs> also, huge thanks to my editor. Um, life has been not fun lately, but I still have YouTube videos, and that's really good. Uh, and I still have a lot of things to be grateful for, and it's nice to be back. So, I will see you guys soon, and also, before I go ahead and leave, I have a cringe announcement, which is, drum roll please, I started a second channel. Now, some of you might think, wow, that's stupid, why would you do that? Easy. Um, because as a person and as a creator, I like doing a lot of things. So I have a lot of hobbies and things that I'm interested in that I love talking about. And the YouTube algorithm does not like that on this channel. And honestly, probably a few viewers here do not like that on this channel. So I can't just regularly be like, Ah, here's a multi-hour deep dive on mysterious things and YouTube algorithm be like, this is what he makes. Good job, Mr. Pen. Keep making that. And then the next week I go, no, I make rock climbing. And then the YouTube algorithm's like, hey dude, what the fuck is wrong with you? So, I have a second channel for all of that. If you'd like to check it out, go check it out. If you don't want to check it out, don't check it out. And to everyone who voted in the poll uh, two weeks ago and was like, he wouldn't do this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that was what I was doing. Uh, content is fun. I'm challenging myself to upload twice a month here and once a week over there. So if you want more Another Pen, check it out. If you want more of what we do on Another Pen, the first channel, uh, stick around. I'm going to keep doing it. Now, that's about it. So until next time, have a great time. That was the wrong hand. Until next time, have a great time. Memento Mori.